Uh, I'm Andrew Adamson. I'm a director, usually, although officially now I'm unemployed. <laughs> Desiree has always served me well. You are in good hands. Oh, hooves. Good luck. Thanks. Look, maybe this time you have this back. Why don't you hold on to it? You might need to call me again. You might need to call me again? Oh, shut up. Um, this was the second Narnia film that you did. Um, and it was a bit darker than the first one. Uh, was it like more fun to do this, or? It's hard to say. It's definitely it's a, it's a grittier, more textured world than the first one. It's a little bit more action than the first one. The first one had the time of uh, the moment of Aslan being killed, which was a pretty scary moment. I don't think there's anything scarier in this film. But um, yeah, I think I enjoyed doing more action. You know, there was it was a chance to play in a different playground. The uh, the raid on the castle that happens in the middle of the film was challenging, but was a lot of fun for me because it was it was new imagery. It was putting mystical creatures in a medieval environment in the middle of the night, and that was sort of fun to play with. Was it harder the two the um, these battle scenes and the, when the first one? I think the whole film was a little harder. I mean, that's one of the things is you learn a certain amount on your first film, and then you challenge yourself to do things that are more difficult. So shooting a lot more locations was difficult. Shooting bigger battles with more complex stunts and visual effects was definitely more difficult. Shooting battles in the middle of the night when you're really tired is difficult. <laughs> so I think uh, the end experience, I would say, you know, you gain confidence from the first time. At the same time, you challenge yourself more. And so it ends up being about the same. Is this film uh, true to the book of Caspian? It is. It's structurally very different. It's, it's the same story told in a different way. But I think if, uh, you know, I had the experience because when you're working on a film, you sometimes forget what you invented and what was really there. It all becomes a blur. And uh, recently I reread the book because I knew I'd be talking about it. <laughs> and I wanted to see, you know, how close did it, en did it end up? And I really did feel like I was reading the same story. But I felt like I'd made a movie of a real story and C.S. Lewis had written a book about it for children. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what lo locations they film on this what did, where like we shot all around. Uh, we shot uh, several locations in New Zealand. We shot stage work here in Prague. We shot a lot of locations around Prague in, in Czech Republic. Then we shot several locations in Poland and in Slovenia. Yeah. Uh, you have made Shrek 1 and Shrek 2, and now these two in Arnia films. Does everything you do turn to coal? <laughs> I would love to think so, but you know, it's like if you keep doing this long enough, at some point you're going to have a failure and every film you just hope okay this I hope this isn't the one but you know you do if you keep trying things and you keep experimenting and you keep trying to grow sometimes it doesn't really work out I've been very fortunate so far I read that you have been you've been animator before you direct is it easier to do these kind of films because you have been animator I think it's definitely helpful uh, particularly when you're shooting a scene that has creatures that aren't really there when I'm watching that scene I see them you know, I, I know what I'm going to do, so they're already in my head, so I'm seeing a finished product, and I sometimes don't even understand why other people aren't seeing what I'm seeing. So I think it's very helpful. Was it hard to find the right people for this film? It's always, you know, in terms of cast, it's always a, an instinct you have to go with, where you meet somebody and you just usually decide straight away if they're going to be the right person or not. And it's always difficult. It's difficult to make that kind of commitment. It's sort of like marrying someone. Yeah. You are not going to be part of the next Narnia film, so what are your future plans? Well, I will be part of them. I'm just not yeah. going to be directing. I'm going to okay. be taking a bit more of a back seat. But um, I'm really going to take a good chunk of time off. Yeah. I've been working for about 11 years without a break, so I think it's time to have a little rest and then just decide what I want to do after that. Yeah. Is the New Zealand the place to find soothing places uh, which looks like uh, straight from the fantasy book. There's some very beautiful locations in New Zealand. Uh, even having grown up there when I was, I was there until I was 11 years old, 
and I didn't spend a lot of time in the South Island of New Zealand. And through scouting these films, I've seen some of the most beautiful parts of New Zealand. And the interesting thing is they're all close together. <laughs> you can be in the mountains one minute and, you know, 20 minutes later you can be down at the ocean. And I think that's one of the, the great things as a filmmaker, you can shoot very different locations very easily. Yeah. So the last one, uh, greetings to people who will want to see the Narnia film from you. Hi everybody, I'm Andrew Adamson, director of The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. I hope you enjoy my film. Thank you.